thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name's Brian, and in this video we're going to be doing another self War Machine battle report. And things get a little awkward here as we have uh, the Heretic playing against Old Witch 2. So she is going to be in Kador instead of Old Witch 3 being in Grimkin. So it's not a mirror match, it's just some awkward infighting. The Heretic's list is being built in Bump in the Night, and our battle group is pretty modest. We've only got two Clockatrice and one Cage Rager, and then the Baron's coming along with this one. Uh, for units, we've got one unit of Holloman with the Lantern Man in it. I think with, uh, I think it just seems like a good pull for them. I haven't done much for or with Holden just yet, but having to choose between the two is a little bit difficult. And then I also brought a unit of Nayslayers with their Warhorse attachment, and then the rest is just a whole slew of support. So there's double Malady Men, uh, double Grave Ghouls, the Twilight Sisters are here. Just tons of support and a couple solos to help us get a little bit of work done. Uh, I think that this list is going to be uh, quite uh, interesting, and I am really worried about how the Hollow Men are going to do against the uh, old witch list, but at least I'm going to be forcing her to cast uh, Windstorm often. So it's not that they're worthless in this one, it's just going to be a little bit weird for them. For Old Witch's list, we're playing in Wolves of Winter, and the, the big callouts are that there's five units of Doom Reavers in this list. You can fit six if you want to take away some of the support, but I do like adding some of the pieces in here that, uh, that I'm bringing along with me. Uh, I have two free units of Greylord Turnians, which are really good right now. I'm happy that they're free in this theme, and I'm happy with the changes that they had gotten in that surprise Christmas Wolves of Winter CID that Kador had received. Uh, I do bring the Void Archon and Alexia. It helps me get extra use out of my Doom Reavers as they die, and then, of course, the Turnians can re bring them back. Uh, the one thing that's different in this list is that my Colden Lords have kind of grown legs and walked away, so instead of having a Colden Lord in this list, I have a Butcher 4 instead. And uh, for the Warjack loadout, there's nothing fancy here. I expect the... Uh, the Doom Reavers to do most of the work. So we've just brought a Juggernaut and a Devastator to take care of Old Witch's Warjack points exactly so I can have the optimal points to spend on support and Doom Reavers. So I tend to approach these battle reports like I would as a pairing. So for the Old Witch side, that pair would be something like uh, this list plus uh, Vlad Three and Warriors of the Old Faith. For the uh, Heretic list, I'd have this and then pair it up with, uh, you know, the Child or the Dreamer or something with a large battle group. And uh, when I was looking at, when I think about looking at both lists for the Kador side, uh, a large battle group just isn't really going to cut the butter against 60 Doom Reavers, or not 60, 30 Doom Reavers. So I had opted to play the Heretic list. First, I'm really enjoying him, and second, I just uh, thought that it would be the better thing to put into this. Um, and the more I'm, the more I, pl the more I play it, it's just like I don't know what the Heretic really does in this. Not that it's like a, the most terrible game in the universe. But it's not easy for him, so I have to kind of really try and play carefully here and really utilize these madcaps to get some blowing AoEs to go out there. Um, and I'm, I only rolled one for the first one. Uh, the, the Hollow Men, it's still a 10 body unit, so I can at least get uh, some charges off maybe. Uh, but for their shots, I'm kind of forcing Old Witch to put up Windstorm, even if she doesn't want to. Like, maybe she wants to throw out some other stuff here and there. But with the Hollow Men there, it just means that she's got to stay on that side of the table. Or not stay on it, but at least get towards there to influence it enough. And, uh, and, and catch them in that Windstorm so they don't become extremely effective against those Doom Reavers. Uh, for the upper side of the table, things are just really screwball-y here. Like, that house which uh, has been in a really, I think, almost the same spot in the last one. So I use that, uh, I, I think it's, is it Crimsy or something like that, War Machine website that um, auto-populates the 
terrain for you and it's kind of put that house there for me each time so i apologize for the house blocking off most of the army when we do the cool transitions but uh, i'll try and just move it to a different spot next time so i can you know have a little bit more of an interesting looking sweep as i run the camera along the side but uh really i want the the madcaps to kind of do a lot of the heavy lifting for me and then the clockatrices are going to uh, try and clean up any of the front lines after that and i also really look forward to uh, wall of fire doing a lot of work uh, in between that house and the forest um, none of the stuff like old witch can't help the doom reavers see anything through that forest i mean they've got a couple units with pathfinder in them with the uh the gray lords but for the most part, I think that I'm going to try and keep most of this stuff in the corner safe, and then the uh, the Nayslayers can kind of blow out from there. I don't want them to get too far away from the Heretic, because I do want to still be able to utilize my Arcana effectively. And if I run some things out too far on that side of the house, things will get weird. Uh, but I did end up positioning a Glimmer Imp and... Uh, a clockatrice on the opposite side of the house the one you can't see so well to try and force the doom reavers to have to go over there but then my plan ultimately is to just kind of fly the clockatrice back the other way So from the Old Witch perspective, I'm perfectly fine running around with Old Witch with a Divinator up so that I can catch all these Hollow Men because with combined ranged attacks, they will probably do a, they, they'll take out Doom Reavers, they just will. And uh, I think in hindsight, it was definitely a mistake to put the Glimmer Imp on the top side of the screen. He should have been kind of following around the uh, Hollow Men just to make those hits easier because then we're only digging for fives, I think against doom reavers maybe sixes yeah no it's fives because their defense 12 now um but digging against fives instead of trying to have to limit their shots by getting combined range attacks but then that makes them just that makes old witch want to come to that side even more and the terrain's pretty beneficial over here for me you'll see that i i kind of had some like uh i guess five month ago brain going on where i just kind of ran over the 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 uh the hill that I treated as rough terrain like it was nothing. Uh, at least those Doom Reavers didn't get super far to where it became a big issue. But my goal here is to just kind of spread out as much as I can to kind of limit limit the uh, impact of the Clockatrice sprays because they're really the only thing that I'm really worried about other than possibly these cask imps that are running around because they do blow up into an AoE 4, so I don't want to give them too much because they just... Whatever Doom Reaver they hit, they end up killing. Uh, but running up some of the Doom Reavers a little further ahead, like I did in the middle here, uh, can at least help me make sure that the Cask Imps don't get too wild. Um, they, they can't just kind of launch deeper into the back and explode where they want to. They still have to respect the, the one flagship Doom Reaver that's trying to keep things back a little bit further. Um, essentially, this, this list really... There's a couple different ways to play it, and I don't think the list actually really starts playing until, like, turn two or three. I mean, that's most lists, though, but Old Witch doesn't really put up a lot of buffs, and uh, the Doom Reavers themselves don't really need to do much until uh, after your opponent kind of responds to how you've positioned them on turn one. So I guess maybe that's just kind of not the greatest statement in the world, but uh, I feel like the Doom Reaver list is just kind of run your Doom Reavers up, kind of space them out to where you've got like two or three layers of waves you can send in and then watch your opponent just kind of deal with them because i mean we have a we have a chain of doom reavers that are maybe like three to four inches apart that start at the top of the screen and run all the way down to the bottom so it's a it's a lot of stuff to take out and when your main tools well, not main tools, but when some of your tools for taking them out are things like ranged attacks, uh, Old Witch's Windstorm can really do a lot of work to you. So you you see here I just put up Windstorm with the Divinator uh, attunement and then uh, charged, a, I think, the Cage Rager or something so that she could 
uh, end up there and apply that pretty far up. So now I'm just trying to make sure that these Doom Reavers can walk up to where they're not in threat of the uh, the Hollow Men because I, I know that they're not shooting far, but I don't want to really give up any Doom Reavers uh, right away. I would rather make the Hollow Men have to work for it or ha I, I can at least get a attack in before they decide to start shooting. So I have to apologize for that turn transition. For whatever reason, something happened when I was filming it and it didn't translate over very well. There was like a big old flash of light or something. It just didn't look right. So instead, I made a nice little sign for you. Uh, so this is where Grimkin gets to kind of respond to how Old Witch does things. I've got to worry about this Void Archon on the bottom because uh, those Hollow Men don't really survive well against not just the the Void Archon, but against the Doom Reavers either. I mean, the Berserk Chain and how I've kind of clumped myself up here. I need to try and spread out a little bit so they don't get as much work done. Uh, the more Berserk Chains you give to Berz to uh, to Doom Reavers, the worse it is. I mean, it's that's pretty common sense, but I've also got, you know, a Heavy back here and that Madcap. If he dies, then he gets to blow up somewhere too, so I just, it's, it's tough stuff over there for dealing with these Doom Reavers, and I gotta try and do as much damage and kill as many of these things as I can to try and just lessen the impact. Uh, one of the helpful things is rolling uh, rolling not sixes on your mad cat or on your cast imp. So I get one that just launches right up here and grabs two doom reavers. So I'll, I'll, I'm fine with that. It's a zero point model that gets a uh, that takes out um, two doom Re well one doom reaver because they have tough at least. So the the tough is a is a bummer. And I think from there, uh, Alexia ends up grabbing the... Or no, Alexia might be a little too far to grab the soul from that one. Uh, but I think I'm going to be... One of the... This is another of the issues when playing against yourself is you kind of forget to check these ranges. Like, if I were on the old witch side just normally playing, I'd be like, okay, that thing died. Do I get that soul? Those are my check boxes. But for when I'm playing on this side of, or the heretic side of the table, I'm not really paying too much attention to that. Uh, so that can that gets a little screwbally, uh, but I know I check that later and to see if she's got it or not. Um, next up, I think I'm using some of the uh, the madcap grunts to try and launch some AOEs. Uh, I know I'm not going to get any work out of rebuke, which really blows, and I'm not going to be able to do much with hex blast other than firing it off at like one of the heavies or an or a large base. A, a, bigger than small base model so I can at least try and get the drifts to catch the Doom Reavers because the, of course they can't be targeted by magic spells or abilities but they can be damaged by them so that's just one way to kind of uh, force some extra damage around. Um, so with the blast damage from these I think I'm looking for sevens to kill because the Doom Reavers are armor 13. And uh, I, I don't seem to quite do that here. I know that uh, one of the things I want to knock out right away before it becomes apparent that I've done this is that uh, this is my first game with Grimkin in quite some time. I haven't played them since they first came out. And uh, there are just some rules that I might have not might have gotten wrong. I mean, I just did. Like, I kind of read the uh the grave ghouls a little awkwardly i thought that they collected corpse tokens in their command but instead it's five inches which is still cool um and i know that they're amazing for it but i just uh think i was collecting corpses a little too generously with them and i don't think i correct that all this game but uh, for the most part it's not a huge concern as far as the the game progress goes but uh it's just some things you don't want to pay attention to when you're watching me play like corpse collection or this mid-turn apparition that I had forgotten about. I mean, I'm going to be generous with the apparitions on both sides because Old Witch can do it at the beginning of each maintenance phase as well. So uh, one of the nice things about playing against yourself, I guess, is that the give and takes are really, uh, really easy to do. I mean, for the most part, I'm not doing a bunch of takes these backsies because that's just not how I typically play. Um, when I play against my opponent's 
casually, I'll probably give them more opportunities to do that kind of stuff to make sure that they uh, have a good experience and can get all of the, uh, the information from the game that they need to. Like if you bring a new model to the table and just put it in the wrong spot, I want to make sure that you don't uh, lose that thing because of a mistake because I want you to experience it and learn from it. Uh, so in this game, most of the take back things are stuff like that where it's just uh, some uh, apparition issues. But if something gets lost, it's not like we're rolling back anything to see if something different would happen. You know, the game is keeping its integrity for the most part. So one of the issues that I'm having in this upper side of the screen is how to navigate this building with the forests. So I'm kind of, the building kind of protects me from the Doom Reavers over here because they can't get through it. Uh, but it also kind of makes me, it, it makes it difficult for me to do much of anything with the stuff I have over here. You'll see that one of the cast gimps is hanging out right on the corner of the house. And it's hard for him to get around or it was difficult for the madcap grunt to get around to uh, throw a bomb because he just couldn't move and not block this cast gimp. So we end up finally getting some more action on the table here, and uh, we get we one for one uh, cast imp into a Doom Reaver. Uh, so I'm kind of piling up a little collection of them over in the corner. Um, and now uh, that was me checking to see if Alexia got the soul for that Doom Reaver, and I, I think it was just out by a hair. Or I was checking command. I was like, is it 10 or 9? I'm pretty sure it's 9. Um, but that was, that was kind of what was going on in that that little area there so again i just don't from the heretic perspective the building is kind of stopping things from happening and i know that i'm just going to get dropped kicked so hard with uh with these doom reavers so i take my glimmer imp who is on the complete wrong part of the table and just run him off to go fight a doom reaver just to see if i maybe get lucky and he ends up missing by one uh, after you factor in his little uh, paralyzing gaze deal. So that wasn't ideal. Uh, and it's not like he's causing a bunch of problems over there. He just kind of ran over there because I figured it would be nice to kill a Doom Reaver. The more you can kill, the better. Especially since Bonds of Woe is a thing. Uh, those Turnians have a really legit spell now. Instead of getting the spray, they have Bonds of Woe to let them kill a living model and then pop a Doom Reaver into, back into a unit. And that really gives this uh, list a lot more like staying power with Doom Reavers. Not like it needed any. With I think some people play with the six Doom Reaver setup, but I think five is just fine, especially with two units that are throwing Bonds of Woe around. Um, your opponents, for the most part with Windstorm, seem to have enough problems taking out Doom Reavers, and you don't need a ton to get there in order to do a lot of work. Uh, so... I think five with the per with the appropriate support works out fine. I think some people might consider it sacrilegious to only bring one Archon with them, but I think that this list works fine. And Alexi is a nice addition here too. So the, the Heretic and the Baron are just kind of hanging out in the center still. I think the Heretic's trying to get into a position where he can get into the zone. If there's ever a chance, he can score it because it doesn't look like Old Witch is really putting a lot of beef in there. Um, I mean, we've got Butcher 4 hanging around. There's a Devastator, but that forest is kind of making it difficult for both of us. A little less so for me, since uh, I can see Old Witch if something needs to happen with her. Uh, but I take the opportunity with the Heretic to launch some uh, Hex Blasts out, and maybe I can clip some of these Doom Reavers. And the first one ends up scattering backwards a ton, and uh, I think I end up hitting my own Trapperkin, which is really unfortunate, and uh, I blow up the damage roll against him and don't have uh, anything on that Grave Ghoul in order to re-roll it, so one Trapperkin just goes down, and he was, I think he failed his job of trying to kill a Doom Reaver anyways, so it's almost like he deserved it a little bit, but I was really hoping that I could get the pile of Doom Reavers that are hanging out by the one that's on fire, um, although it just didn't end up happening that way. I think this is the second Hex Blast that we're sending out now, and this one ends up deviating in a decent direction. Uh, it, it should be able to clip two Doom Reavers, and uh, I think that's what we end up getting. So uh, with this, we're, we're looking for sevens to kill, I believe, and I, I have enough focus on 
uh, or enough fury on the heretic where I was able to boost one of them. And uh, one just like really flopped the roll. And then there was one that ended up connecting and breaking armor. So uh, that ended up giving the Void Archon the soul because I think Alexia and the Void were close enough to be in contention for it. But the Void Archon just ends up eating up all those, well, the ones that are that she is kind of messing with. So the Baron goes up now and he's going to launch a Hex Blast as well at Old Witch. And this one isn't going off in the, it's going off in the right direction and goes enough to hit two more Doom Reavers. So that was a really helpful way to try and work with them although he only bends up breaking armor on one of them and they don't tough so that was beneficial for him as well i it's just uh if you see doom reavers and you're worried like i think it's one of the things people forget about a lot is the whole magic damage thing but i already talked about that um definitely trying to use every tool i have at my disposal to try and get rid of as many of these as i can because the the more i can get rid of in that middle area the the better off I'll be in the long run because that first connect with Doom Reavers, if you get to if you get kinda get smacked with them twice, it just makes things really hard and then you start getting flanks collapse or sides collapsed and it's just not a not a good experience at all. Um and again, I think a, a lot of my points and models are tied up in areas where they can't really do much. Um and uh, I think I might have missed it when I was talking about it, but I put down Wall of Fire uh, between that house and the forest. That's going to be a really big tool for me in order to try and slow down the advance on that side because it, I have, I probably could have thrown it up on the side with the Hollow Men just to keep them a little bit safer. But uh, I think that I'm more worried about things coming into that side with the Heretic because I don't want to be feeling pressure from both sides really. I just want to be able to make sure that the heretics side with uh, the madcaps and the nayslayers can, and then the clockatrices, because I've moved both of them, kind or I moved that other one across the building over here too. I want to make sure those pieces stay alive, and the best way for me to do that is by putting that wall there. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think for the hollow men, they are not long for this world. They're kind of just wasting time over there, I think, more so than anything. But the uh, the Clockatrice ends up taking a charge against the Doom Reaver here so it can get an assault shot. And uh, it boosts where it can. I think I end up just barely missing the, the very last Doom Reaver, that one that's back by the one that was on fire. And then uh, I think I also missed the one that was in front of me, but I've got uh, plenty of attacks to try and uh, blow through this Doom Reaver. So I end up boosting the hit. Um, and he does tough, so that's unfortunate. Uh, well, I guess the tough check must have went on to one in the back instead of the one that I had charged. So I was it must have been that I was boosting the hit, and then he toughed. So uh, it's hard to keep all of this straight when there's just so many Doom Reavers that are dying each activation. Uh, so now I think I finally get my charges off, and I'm just fishing for the, uh, the 7 to hit. Uh, so the second one connects, and that Doom Reaver doesn't tough. So... I'm feeling good about how much I've taken out of the middle. I think when I count them all up, it was something like seven or eight Doom Reavers total that had died here, which is a decent amount, but that's still not even a third of the Doom Reavers that are left. So that's one of the things this old witch list or any Doom Reaver list really does to you is you feel good because you're killing all of these low defense, low armor models. But once you've ended up flattening all of them or flattening that that first crew and really putting uh or that first wave and putting a lot of effort into doing it you just open up yourself or open yourself up for your opponent to come in and do a ton of work to all of the th pieces that you've used to clear out those doom reavers so that you're less likely to do so as the turns progress but thankfully with the heretic though i've picked a pretty good setup of arcana to try and hold off the Doom Reavers. I've got uh, Pandemonium as one of them because since I can't get Rebuke off, uh, I think that it's going to be really helpful to stop one of the Doom Reaver charges. I also picked, uh, I believe, Desolation. Uh, this way I can slap down some Burning Earth as soon as one of these Doom Reavers moves in, and hopefully I just end up catching one that doesn't have the uh, the, the Greylord attachment. 
So that way they don't, first they don't have a pathfinder when they're going through that. And then it means that only one of them is going to get to where they really want to get to. And it, it's almost like having a second pandemonium. And then, of course, the third one is reckoning, which is not extremely important, maybe more so on the to hit than it is on the damage against this list. But if I get the opportunity to drop it and uh, take to take out a heavy or something like a void archon, that'll make life a lot easier since I don't have um, a lot of concent concentrated attacks in one package here. It's mostly things like a large, large number of units from the hollow men and and all that. I am hoping, though, that with these Hollow Men, if I can kind of, kind of advance that first lineup, uh, I should be able to weather that first brunt of hits, and then uh, you be able to utilize the Lantern Man to try and bring back whatever the uh, the old witch player takes from me. So now I'm I'm opting to advance them because I'm I haven't quite calculated or figured out like what the range is going to be like because they go from 10 inches to five so that's that's not super great for them and uh as you see i'm taking on my widget here and i've only got like a couple that can actually shoot and i think it might even just be one so it's really unfortunate and it's especially one that's over the hill or not over the hill over the wall so that one misses and things just go poorly so i at least move up the grave ghoul and the Cage Rager so that I can try and uh, get some corpses to try and make up for it. Now, what I probably should have done was run a lot of these guys to engage the Doom Reavers to kind of minimize their impact instead of what I've got going on here. So from the Kador side, we end up uh, activating, I think this is unit number five. So in order for me to keep all of my Doom Reavers together, I have them numbered on the back so that all the units are just kind of kept together just fine. And it really is helpful for Bonds of Woe and making sure none of them get mixed up. I mean, they're all painted the same color. Uh, so there's, I don't really vary them at all. I think some people might change the color of their swords, but numbers on the back work just fine for me. And I don't usually get into the habit of mingling my doom reavers although i know a lot of people do that just to kind of throw their opponents off it's a perfectly fine strategy just not one for me so those doom reavers had gotten the apparition uh deal and my void archon has one soul on it so i know that i can get a ton of hollow men with just this spray here so i charge the hollow men over all my stuff and uh my intention then is to spray the rest of the hollow men that are behind him and this should increase my soul economy quite a bit so that I can do a lot of work to whatever I need to, wherever I need to, and uh, make sure that I can teleport into a better space so I'm not like I'm not threatened by a cage rager or a clockatrice or anything. Uh, so when I end up spraying through, I end up catching three of these hollow men, and uh, I think that in hindsight when I had said that like engaging all these Hollow Men with Doom Reavers was probably the better idea. I still think it's a good idea. Um, I just, I feel like I might have forgotten that the Void Archon can just kind of go in there and clear them off. So that was something that might have gotten me weird when, if that would have played out. But I think overall it probably would have been the better strategy anyways. So uh, we've got the Void Archon getting a bunch of souls off of sprays and then the, uh, the, the Grave Ghoul. I think that it's when the void archon charged for sure he wouldn't have been able to grab that corpse but for the rest of the sprays he would be able to so when i had said that the the grave ghouls collection range was kind of being fudged a little bit by me it wasn't the worst thing in the universe for him because i i realized the the potential of his collection a little too late so but i think that's kind of more how i learn some of these games is by making the mistakes up front i think in uh, one of the recent, relatively recent tournaments that I played in, I brought Animeg for the first time, and uh, I ended up like putting Fury of Strength on Golab and and just doing all sorts of like really not good things uh, to my opponent based on that. So definitely, uh, 
need to get better on learning my rules right away. But I've played Kador for so long that it's really hard for me to uh, mess up the rules for these guys. It's just that I, I branch into so many other factions and then don't stick with them for very long. So I, I kind of flop around a lot. You know, I think the last time I played a list for more than like three months was way back when like runes and EE were the, the common trolls pairing. So that's just uh, that kind of shows how much I've kind of floated around over the years. But uh, from the old witch perspective, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what I want to do here and how I want to get rid of certain things. Like that clockatrice is really, that's probably one of the more threatening things. Like I, I worry about the madcaps a lot. Um, but I can kind of, I'm hoping that the Doom Reavers can deal with that problem. So I'm looking at ways to try and deal with this clockatrice. And, uh, the first thing that comes up to me is, or comes up in my head is like Alexia's, uh, little strength through death thing or whatever, where she can boost, uh, with souls. I had to double check to see if she could boost the magic damage rolls with that. And it seems to me like she can. So I end up t throwing a Hellfire out at the uh, Clockatrice, and I connect, which is nice. I mean, I only needed a 6 to get there, but um, I got it. Or, well, oh, I must have thrown the Hellblast, or the, the Hellfire at a Mad... No, not a Mad Cap. What the heck was that? I don't know. You'll probably be able to see better than I will as far as what it was that I just pulled off the table here. Um, I know it wasn't a Malady Man because he's towards the bottom, and it wasn't a Monkey... Uh, so I'm not 100% sure. She hell, she hell blasted something off there, hell fired something off the table, but I'm not 100% sure what it was. Um, maybe it was just to clear the way for Doom Reavers. So I have the, uh, the combat caster, uh, Greylord go first in this unit. I think it's unit number one. Uh, and then he makes it so they can charge over this wall, and I only need to deliver a handful of Doom Reavers to actually do anything. So I end up getting one in on the uh, the Clockatrice and uh, two into this pod of uh, Hollowmen, and you can kind of see already just by looking at the way they're uh, they're positioned. These it's kind of like Berserk Heaven over here. I won't get a ton of them, but I will get a good portion of the unit that's left over. And that's just that one unit of Doom Reavers with one all behind it. So it's a pretty good a pretty good setup for me. Again, I think it probably would have been better as the Heretic side to launch the the Hollow Men in to try and build up the lantern the use utilize the lantern man again. But the first charge goes into that clock trice, and you can see in the upper uh, right hand corner how much damage was done to it. That Doom Reaver really trucked that damage roll. Uh, so we end up pulling off all the doom, or all the the second Doom Reaver pulls off all the Hollow Men that were around him, and I think I barely have range to take the Berserk attack into this uh, Cage Rager, and uh, I end up connecting on him uh, because his defense is quite low, and this is going to be a dice off, uh, I think seven hit, and you can see again, like it's just coming up roses for the Doom Reaver side, so. We've got uh, a ton of damage going on the Cage Rager already. The Clockatrice has taken a ton of damage. And the Hollow Men are just like, they're falling down like flies, really. I, the, the, their defensive stats are just right for the, the Doom Reavers. They, Doom Reavers have high, uh, high mat and they're weapon masters. So there's not much in terms of small-based infantry that they can't deal with. And uh, next up, we're just going to be getting the... Um, the Turnians up, and this was like, I kind of had a brain fart for a moment here. I was setting them up to get a bunch of spray attacks into the one that was engaging uh, another Doom Reaver up here, and I was hoping to just kind of get the one that was the Hollow Man that was in the back as well, uh, closer to the Doom Reaver that had charged right away, but then I realized, oh yeah, they have Bonds of Woe, so I have to spread them out a little bit differently. And now instead I'm looking at throwing a bunch of dice that are going into combat. But the uh, the the first one misses and that second one connects. So this way I can kind of pull this uh, Trapperkin, I think. It might be a Trapperkin that's kind of engaging the Doom Reaver over here. And uh, we, we end up uh, doing quite a bit of damage to it. Oh, maybe that was... So it wasn't the Trapperkin we went after, it was the Hollow Man. I guess like... The Trapperkin's defense is high enough to where the the Turnians would have had to like 
roll ridiculous in order to connect to it. So just I think we're just trying to make sure that the Doom Reavers behind them, I think this is a Doom Reaver unit number five, uh, could just kind of bury in there a little bit and not have to worry about the the trapper kin so much. But again, our 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 Void Archon's already capped up on souls, which is really good. I think the the Void Archon is definitely uh if not the best, definitely number two on the list of Archons. I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for the Menite one as long as it's wearing Kador colors. Uh, but the Void Archon is pretty egregious too. Like even I keep forgetting about the in, the Dark Shroud that he applies to. So there's just tons of tons of value in that model for what it does. Um, if Alexia two didn't do so much work for me, I would probably throw a, a second Void Archon in here, but I just really like having those two different pieces in order to get into, like, flags because I don't have a lot of solos here, um, or at least solos that I want to get rid of, so she can just kind of make flag sitters and contesting pieces, and I really enjoy that since the staying power of this list is a little bit lower, even though I have Bonds of Woe. And so Doom Reaver Unit 5 goes in, and I'm kind of doing this, like, uh, typewriter or uh, corn on the cob eating style of Doom Reaver play where I'm starting on one side and going straight forward to the other side. Uh, but they're going in to try and collapse the rest of this flank out. Uh, there's still the Malady Man and the Monkey hanging around. And then there's a couple uh, a couple Hollow Men that are off the screen to the side. Um, I, I Definitely the angle on the, the video camera isn't ideal for me. I would have liked it to be a little bit... Uh, different, more like the first one where you could kind of see the models better, but I'll, I'll keep working on it as I go along. I think this angle changes every time I shoot a video, so hopefully I can just find a, a sweet spot and make it work. But uh, the reason why I had kind of walked away here for a minute was that I had to... Uh, or wait, no, that I was thinking I had to go get my Doom Reavers, but I think I was more so thinking about what I needed to do here. Uh, you can see after the Doom Reavers went into that bottom portion that... Uh, the Malady Man and his monkey are still around, and then that Grave Ghoul is still hanging around too. So essentially this whole bottom part here is all the threatening pieces are really gone. I think the monkey is going to be a pretty threatening piece in general with the killing spree. Uh, or is it something wicked or something like that is the order that he or the battle plan that he gives out? Um, but now we're sending more Doom Reavers out, and I think this unit had lost quite a few Doom Reavers before. Uh, in the previous turn, so there's only a couple in here that can run up and engage things. Uh, we're trying to engage the cask imps that were made because that's probably um, my best way to get rid of them right now is to just uh, engage them up so that they don't uh, they don't have to wander and wander around anywhere. Uh, so you just saw the clockatrice do its time stutter thing. So that first Doom Reaver that connected hit it in just the right spot to where it didn't lose a system. Uh, or an aspect, uh, but the second Doom Reaver did cause it to lose one, but ended up leaving it on only a handful of boxes. So my hope is to try and find a way to get deal with that Clockatrice, but it's uh, kind of time stuttered into the forest, so it's going to be uh, defense 15 against shooting. But I have a plan here. So I activate Old Witch, and I don't put Windstorm up because I don't need it anymore. The the madcap bombs were kind of funny under Windstorm because they go down to range one. But uh, my hope here is to scourge and uh, and kill this Clockatrice. So I end up uh, using the, or I do the um, attunement on my Vexing Arcana or Arcantrix. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but I, I end up doing uh, w my spells cost one less so that I can drop a fully boosted Scourge here and still camp one, because I, I feel pretty comfortable up here based on the work that I'm doing on this lower side. Uh, and you saw my Scourge roll triple ones, but both the Heretic and the Old Witch took the treasure chest for their objective, and that was a really good opportunity for her to blow it, because uh, it was a five co or four-cost spell, essentially, that's going to turn into five because of the boost. And we end up cranking the damage roll high enough to get rid of that Clockatrice. So it was well worth it to get that piece out of there so I don't have to deal with uh, the sprays coming in. Because the way that I've lined up these Doom Reavers on the bottom of the screen, they are really well set up to have uh, a lot of sprays come in and do damage to them. Or at least take a bunch of them out. 
and uh, then that opens up the Void Archon to kind of getting uh, dealt or charged by the Cage Rager or something, or maybe uh, getting Hex Blasted or Gallowsed off the table somehow. Not off the table, but at least into a position where it can die. Um, and then I end up kind of building an insurance policy by running the uh, the Juggernaut to kind of body block for Old Witch, because I do know that I'm I'm close enough to the Cage Rager to where I could get a charge in, but with the three Doom Reavers kind of sitting there and then the Juggernaut behind it and the Cage Rager also having taken some damage but not losing any aspects, is uh, it's good to have that heavy there to make sure that Old Witch is well protected and that Devastator's just a little bit too far away to make it to the table where it's going to matter, or at least not to where it's going to matter, but where uh, it's going to be able to help Old Witch kind of stay alive too. I didn't feel like it was worth popping my feet this turn because I'd only really be doing it for the uh, um, for that Scourge, so I feel fine with not using it that turn. Uh, next up, we kind of flop to the other side and have got the very, very top side Doom Reavers uh, going in, and they, I think the only thing they attacked was uh, maybe a Glimmer Imp that was off screen that I think ended up whiffing it. And then another Doom Reaver ran to engage some Nayslayers. And then uh, I realized as I was running things around that I didn't put enough Doom Reavers into the zone to have, like, one full unit in, in there. So I had to walk up the Turnians. They didn't really have anywhere better to go anyways, but they're in that zone, so they scored as well. run uh, ran out of power and uh, I didn't notice it so another like downfall of playing against yourself at least when it comes to recording these things is anything that happens outside of the game is just another layer of something you have to remember which I'll keep in mind for the next one that I film for these so I don't lose this footage but let's go over what happened on Grimkin turn three so from the heretic side, I realized that I really need to deal with this pod of guys. Uh, if I do that, I can then get some assassination potential. I thought it was mostly with the Cage Rager, but then I realized I, I had pulled the Juggernaut out of the way so that I could get the Cage Rager in. I rolled a 6, so he got there no problem, but then I realized that if I put the parry order on the uh, Nayslayers, I can get about 3 of these in with desperate pace on them. And uh, that's what I end up delivering to Old Witch at dice damage, and it just flatlines her. So I still have this Cage Rager who everything's been cleared out enough to where the Cage Rager can get in there with no problems. So it was a really good assassination run that had been set up on Old Witch here. But when I was playing the Old Witch side, I kind of got into that rut where I'm only looking at it from the perspective of the... Uh, of the army that I'm playing, right? So when I was playing Old Witch, I felt pretty comfortable here. I didn't feel like there were a lot of outs for the Heretic because I was putting the Heretic under a lot of pressure and taking away a lot of their tools. But uh, when I went to the Heretic side, I realized that um, if the game kept going the way it was, I was not going to win this attrition battle, especially since I haven't used, I completely forgot that my Arcana existed, really. So I started manufacturing this assassination run because I just didn't feel like the game was going to go anywhere otherwise, or at least go towards a win for me at all. And uh, that was that's kind of how I approach every game that I play against other people, right? I'm, every turn I'm looking at things as, I'm, as though I'm trying to tease apart a puzzle. I'm not always trying to set up weird conditions for my opponent i'd rather you know solve the problem instead of try to avoid it in the first place and i think that's just my you know it's just how i play um but what i need to try and do to make these games against myself a little less subject to folly like this is try and switch between the mindsets of both players at the same time so when old witch goes here i need to just be more cognizant of what's going on now i'm not saying that in my normal games i don't do that at all because i'm always trying to be cognizant of uh, the assassination win or weird scenario plays that I might be giving my opponent but for whatever reason I just seem to kind of flip that switch off when I'm playing against myself so I'll try to improve that more for the next one and uh, definitely try and practice the list that I'm playing against other people more so I don't have to worry about choking on all these weird rules or activations 
Speaking of, the next battle report's going to be Kador and the Legion, and the caster that I'll be playing is dependent on how the Facebook communities uh, end up voting on those. I've, I have one poll in Legion and one poll in Kador, and once those close, I'll have those lists built and ready to go, and uh, I'll be able to do that battle report here. I'll look forward, I'll look at doing more of that in the future, so if you missed your opportunity to get involved in that, don't worry, there will be more coming. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this battle report, and I look forward to making the next one for you.